Hi, I'm Jim Sanderson with the Small Wildcat Conservation Foundation. Thanks for joining me at the October WCN Expo. I'm here in Peru visiting my colleague Cindy and Alvaro, who are running the Pampas Cat Working Group. Behind me you can see a fire that's burning their habitat here near the ocean. We're very close to the ocean from here. This is critical habitat. These trees are threatened with extinction. They're called algarobo trees. And this fire was intentionally started to harvest these trees. The Park Service is supposed to be working here, but without us being here, there would be far more fires and far more devastation. Let me, let me introduce Cindy Hartado, who's going to talk for the Office Cat Working Group. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. I will tell you about the Pampas Cat Working Group. Our main aim is to reduce the threats the Pampas Cats are facing across its distribution. This is a Pampas Cat, and not many people know this species. So if you've never heard of it, you're not alone. This species is easily recognizable by the three black lines on its front legs. These cats are really small. They usually weigh two kilograms, which is half the size of a regular domestic cat. This species is also really elusive and it can live in extreme places. For example, you can find it in the Andes at altitudes above 4,000 meters, which is roughly about 13,000 feet. At this altitude, many people will have difficulty breathing. Believe me, I know. However, this cat has no problem strolling around and hunting in such a place. This cat also lives at the other extreme, at sea level where temperatures can reach above 100 Fahrenheit in the desert. And then again, no problem for this little cat. I know what you're thinking. What an amazing cat. If you thought the Pampas cat only lived in open areas, that's not the case. They also live in the dry forest of Peru and Ecuador. Because this cat has such a big distribution and it can be found in many places, researchers thought that it could actually represent different species. Recently, they found morphological and genetic evidence to support this claim. So now we don't have one Pampas cat species, but five. We're focusing our efforts in Western South America where we found Cola Cola and Garlepi species. Unfortunately, all of these species suffer many threats. Feral dogs are a threat because they transmit diseases to wild populations. We also found cats that suffer from road kills, habitat loss, fires, as Jim showed, and retaliatory killings. This photo is showing what most Pampas cats face across its distribution. Retaliatory killings are really common. And the story usually goes like this. Pampas cats find easy prey in free ranging chicken or poorly built enclosures. They go in, kill as many animals, and this is the way they come out. And this is gonna be a hard photo to look at. But this is how many Pampas cat end up after killing domestic animals. Fortunately, we have these amazing people, Soila, Marinia, and Patricio, who are part of the Pampas cat working group and who are working to reduce this threat. They work in Peru and Chile and work with rural communities to change the way they keep their animals. So these are poorly built enclosures that they usually find in the field. So now they're trying to change this to this, a better built enclosure with a roof that is preventing cats from going inside. Another threat that we found are that people are keeping these Pampas cat kittens as domestic animals. They're keeping them as pets. So when we talk to these people, what they usually say is the same story. 
They found the kittens in the wild. They thought they were domestic cats. They kept them. And usually most of them either do not know how to care for them and they die or when the cats grows and becomes aggressive, then they give them back to the authorities. The sad part is that most of these kittens do not even reach the authorities. Either they die during transport, they die because people do not know how to care for them. And when they do reach the authorities, then the end of their journey becomes spending their whole life in captivity. So now we partner with the Margarita Zoo to change this, to give these kittens another opportunity to have a second chance. So we're building this enclosure, which will become a rehabilitation enclosure. So where these cats will have the opportunity to learn hunting skills, to learn to fear humans, and hopefully have a second chance to be wild. Most of our members are also working to mitigate other threats. For example, we have here Pedro who's building these road signs. He's trying to alert drivers of potential wildlife crossings and prevent more road kills of Pampas cats. All of our programs and projects work with environmental education. We educate children and adults we show them the importance about pampas cats in the ecosystem and the threats that they're facing. We also have monitoring programs with camera traps. We're trying to see where the cats are, if our programs are working or not, and we're trying to see if we actually have an impact. Most of these projects have recently started. So I hope that I got everybody excited about pampas cats these are some of the stories about some of our members. And I would like to thank everyone for your continued support that it's helping us protect these little cats. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed Cindy's talk as much as I did. I'm here in southern Brazil where we're doing a vaccination campaign for cats and dogs in this rural village. Why are we doing this? Well, it turns out that this is a global wildcat hotspot. We have four species of cats shown here, and there are two other species of small cats in this region. Six small cats in one region is a global wildcat hotspot. We're here in this village doing a vaccination campaign because wild cats get diseases from domestic dogs and cats. If we can improve the lives of these working class people, They'll help us conserve the small cats in the region. This is put on, this is being held by the Joffrey's Cat Working Group. And a lot of the rural people are coming here to get their dogs and cats vaccinated as a result of our campaign. We've carried out these campaigns at many sites around South America and they're very effective. Last month we vaccinated more than 1,200 dogs and cats. Why is this important? Because wild cats can get diseases from domestic dogs and cats. Last week, we got a picture of a jaguarundi with mange. These diseases are impact impacting wildlife negatively. And we're trying to do something about it. Obviously, we need a lot more help. We've already started. Thanks.